Good afternoon, Mr. Cloyd. How are you doing, Mr. Delay? I'm doing. I'm doing great. How was the drive to here? Ah, uh, a lot of traffic. Lot of I'll traffic. tell you that. How long did it take you? Um, it took me like 30 minutes longer than I anticipated. Wow. But I did. I did uh, make sure I added that time mm -hmm. in the mix mm -hmm. of it because I knew, you know, Tacoma traffic is horrible. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. How's your day going? It's pretty good. You know, I just had a. Uh, three people coming before you so mm -hmm. but other than that it's pretty slow it's pretty a slow day you day know? packed full of interviews um i have about like six more or so yeah yeah but we'll, we'll see how it goes today with you i saw your application you know definitely there's some qualification that definitely stood out to me so oh i'm glad to hear from you today that's good news yeah um so for you um i'll just get right into it mm -hmm. um you know just tell me a little bit more about yourself um so I guess for starters, uh, I'll start out with my interests. Uh, I, I like to go out hiking. Um, it's been a passion of mine uh, for a while now and I'll, I'll go and I'll gather a couple friends and we'll research like a place to get to the top of a mountain or go on like a long journey and, sure. and really, yeah. So it's been something I, I've been passionate about and I, uh, I, I really like have a newfound respect for the environment itself and, and want to um, con contribute in a, in a positive way. Um, when when I go out there and I see trash on the ground, I'll go and pick it up, and I carry like a trash bag on, in, in my bag so I can put it in, you know, just to clean up the environment. And um, um, aside from that, I I really like uh, music. I I picked up uh, drums, guitar, and piano, and uh, played played those for a while, and and really started getting into like music production and. Nice. Um, and uh, picked up a, a program, and uh, it, it actually took me a, a while to learn it. It's very uh, complex, mm -hmm. and it requires a lot of analytical thinking and, and, and patience. Patience oh, is very, sure, very key. Sure. Um, a lot of repetitive, you know, just, you know, perfect your craft, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That's all it is. And um, so uh, um, working for Fred Meyer, uh, I've, I've learned a lot, I've, acquired a lot of skills um, I've uh, it's a very customer oriented um, job that requires uh, good interpersonal skills and, and really knowing what the customer wants and, and making them feel good and giving them the right information so um, so they feel good about their experience so that's one thing that I've I've really mastered actually working at Fred Myers is really connecting with the customer as well as employees nice. and um, uh, as well as uh, I've had a, a couple leading opportunities too, so um, I've acquired some leadership skills and um, I, my approach to things is very um, enthusiastic and um, I, I like to motivate people as well um, to produce um, quality work. Quality work, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. Nice, you definitely look like the man with enthusiasm, you know, <laughs> Thank I like you. your upbeat energy. And uh, that's also uh, one question I had was, yeah. um, your experience with the outdoors, I mean, you kind of knocked it off the park with there, so um, it seems you're conscientious, conscious about, you know, environment, you know, mm -hmm. recycling, you know, just kind of preserving Mother Nature, the Earth, so yeah. it's really good, you know. Um, how long have you worked at Fred Meyer? Uh, I've worked there for about three and a half years, um, maybe a little more, actually. Uh, it's It's been a long journey. I started out as a parcel, and... Uh, worked really hard, um, you know, being on time, um, being a really efficient with with uh, my tasks, and um, also uh, taking leading opportunities where they wanted me to train all of the new incoming parcels because they, they thought I did a, a very good job at explaining everything and, um, you know, making it a good experience for them. You know, sometimes they'll have... Um, people that'll teach them, but they'll teach them in a very boring and, and uh, they don't add very much details to it. They're just like, oh, this is what very I do. This, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, you can kind of do steps, that, yeah. but it's very like personalized and then, mm -hmm. and then they, have a, they have a specific way of doing things. And so I, I tend to follow those guidelines to make sure that they're um, very effective in, mm -hmm. in their position. So I started out there and then I... I um, uh, normally, you have to wait six months to apply to a different position, but I worked really hard and showed them that I was, I cared, and that I was an asset to their team, 
and they moved me over to produce where um, I could pick up a lot of other additional skills uh, such as um, uh, knowledge of produce as well as uh, multitasking that was a big um, a big thing in, in in produce there's a lot of different tasks that and they were always switching to different things depending on um, how busy it was you know yeah. you'd be doing one task and then a customer would come up and, and ask you for information about a product over here or if they could try something or if they could get any help in, in moving something and so you had to be able to fit those um, interruptions I guess they're not really interruptions but um, in the midst of of your actual job so yeah, yeah so it was kind of a time management thing too that you had to finding that balance from yeah dealing with customer service and and still your, executing your, your actual tasks, tasks for your job yeah so sure. that was uh, that was definitely a big thing um, I learned was uh, was multitasking as well as you know effectively communicating to um, yeah. the customers and um, um, there was a couple leading opportunities too that I'll uh, be sure to go on about uh, further in, in the interview. Mm -hmm. So talk about customers. Mm -hmm. um, have you had a situation where you dealt with a difficult customer? And if so, um, how did you deal with it? Uh, yes, I, well, you know, working in a grocery store, you you deal with a lot of difficult customers, all kinds. Some are very, um, very nice and, and easy to communicate with, and mm -hmm. others requires, uh, you have to be able to adapt to their style of communication. So yeah. their needs, uh, some might come in angry and um, if they have a problem that you need to um, solve, basically, and, and figure out ways to, to get this customer from being you know, angry to a happy customer because mm -hmm. that's where you really develop a relationship, um, a strong relationship with a customer is when you're able to turn something bad into something good and they see it that way too so um, they could have a bad um, a bad uh, view of, of Fred Meyer going Just in a bad perception yeah yeah, yeah. and and so it, it's my job to, to make sure that that customer does not have that bad view and that we will go great lengths to so a, a specific example is we had we had a customer that came in um, who had ordered a box of oranges um, and we he approached me with uh, letting me know you know he ordered these box of, boxes of oranges so I went in the back and I searched the whole fridge and I couldn't find it anywhere and, and it would be kept in the fridge because it has to be refrigerated mm -hmm. um, so I was I was really thinking to myself, like, well, where could this be? So I, I, I checked other areas in the produce department, and it was it was nowhere. And I was the only one on the on the floor at the time, so I didn't have any of my department managers there at the moment. So I uh, went back out to the customer and uh, apologized, and to basically I let him know that we don't have the oranges, but. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get these oranges because yeah. maybe they're somewhere around the store. And so he was still pretty angry at that time because he needed these oranges by um, a certain time. A certain time later in the day. So, um, so I I went out and I started talking to a couple um, department heads around the store um, because we had a load that day mm -hmm. and. Um, later I found out that the meat department accidentally got one of our, our shipments mm. and I, it happens very rarely, but it, it does happen. Yeah. And so I found the oranges actually on a pallet that was in the back. So I, uh, grabbed a cart and moved all the oranges back to produce. And then I brought out a box for him and, um, let him, uh, you know, I let him know that, it, you know, sorry for, for all the weight and, you know, I, I, scoured the store to try to find these things and, and he was uh, 
very happy, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. found him as we got him. Well, because he was convinced that he wasn't going to get the oranges. It's yeah. like, ah, oh, yeah. wasting my time. You know, I got this meeting. So mm-hmm. I managed to find it for him, luckily, after digging through a bunch of Yeah, things. yeah. And he ended up, uh, he walked out a happy customer. Definitely so. looked around the whole store to meet this customer's needs. And, yeah. You know, and you did uh, mention that, you know, or you kind of subtly mentioned that customers, you know, they're very, very valuable, you know, and... Without customers, there's no money. Exactly. <laughs> and with that um, um, scenario, uh, situation, um, how did that conversation go with, uh, I guess, the meat department or whatever? Was there a difficult conversation or...? No, it was fairly easy. Fairly I was, easy. I was, um, I just approached them in a, in a fashion where... Um, I explained the situation where uh, I have a customer who who needed these oranges mm-hmm. and we don't have them in our department and I know that we had a load would would you mind if I looked in the back uh, refrigerator to mm-hmm. see if I you know the load was in there and I'm sure it was accidental yeah you know, it wasn't intended yeah um, it's it's the load breakers that end up um, putting it in and so it just got mixed mix matched yeah. with the uh, the meat department stuff so I'm glad that it was a bit of sold in such yeah. a special manner um, yeah he ended up coming back you know a week later and so you, yeah you I, I asked him about the event and you know that's another thing with the customers too is you get kind of you get uh, you develop a personal relationship with, with a lot of the customers so, yeah especially if they're regulars you come in so they come back and they're like you know you know hey Kyle you know and they always <laughs> got something to say you know yeah so. yeah yeah um, in Fred Meyer, your previous job, um, tell me how you work effectively under pressure. So, f- Fred Meyer, um, there's a lot, there's always a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, there's pressure from the management, um, and there's a lot of managers in a, in a grocery department, uh, grocery store. You, you have your department head. Um, you have your PICs, your person in charge, mm-hmm. and you have your store director, and you have your merchandising manager, and, and so everybody's kind of pulling you around in different directions based on um, what needs to come first. So mm-hmm. prioritizing duties and um, and and making sure everything is, you know, like multitasking is, is a huge part in it. So for sure. So. Um, it can be really busy, especially here in the holidays, um, like Thanksgiving. That is super busy, and so it, it's it's we have to put out double the produce, and there's triple the customers that come in. I mean, it's just slam. full slam. Yeah. So you have constant questions from customers, and um, and a lot of opportunities where you need to be you need to be fast paced yeah. and, and on it and and work as a team like teamwork is, is very important when it comes to uh, especially on those days because when you got so many things going on um, we like to call them fires so if if there's produce that's uh, that's running low that would be considered a fire so fires start erupting everywhere mm. and we got to work as a team to make sure that both sides of the department are on tip top shape. So if some, if a person over here is, is having a tough time, you know, we, we have to stop what we're doing on our side to help them out. Um, you know, because we're, we would be losing sales. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, from a customer point of view, when something's low or and pick through, it just doesn't look good and, and it's not presentable to them. So that, that's another key point that we, have to address is making sure that the department is presentable and and um, and they're able to grab what they need. Nice. So, so, so pretty much, pre- sorry, but pretty much, you know, you want to make sure that the product is always being displayed, making sure that it's a constant, uh, I guess, check on the, the products, making sure that you know they're the quality is good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just it's like a a repeating pro- process. Like we'll. We'll go through that throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, you know, stressful situations will happen where you need to get certain things done. And you have customers 
asking you all kinds of questions and and while while you're helping another customer so you have to solve problems simultaneously and in an, in an efficient and effective time yeah, so yeah, like yeah. You, you know you get pulled over here you know this customer is being impatient so you have to figure out a way to you know do two things at once and and make sure you remember all those things because you don't want to go to a customer and be like well what did you say uh, I don't remember I sorry I got pulled over you know I mean they just don't like to hear stuff like that mm -hmm. so you definitely have to be um, you got to pay attention to detail you have to multitask effectively you have to communicate effectively and you have to um, make sure that you know your team is is working right and, On their you know team. yeah and I, you know, I like that um, to spread enthusiasm and you know motivate you know my coworkers and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I'll always say like, you know, you're doing a great job, man. You know, yeah. we're, we're we're really doing this. You know, mm -hmm. so we all feel good and, and we're excited to work there. So, yeah, and I'm sure deep inside, like you know, that means a lot to them because you know, um, they feel appreciated. They feel appreciated, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that that goes that goes far too. Appreciation goes very far when it comes to exactly work ethic. And um, one question I did have. Um, yeah. What kind of management responsibilities did you gather or tasks you had to do for Fred Meyer or from your previous job? Um. So, uh, Fred Meyer in particular, we we had to work side by side with management a lot. So mm -hmm. I, I got to work with. Uh, the store director on a, quite a few projects, as well as the the merchandising manager. Um, I, I tend to uh, I made myself really available uh, to them um, aside from my my main position. So I wanted to acquire additional skills and really get a feel for what the store is all about. So um, I would um, take on grocery shifts and. And help out managers and and tasks that um, and call outs as, as well. And um, they taught me a lot of um, techniques um, for merchandising and displaying, and as well as functions on the the scanner gun um, mm -hmm. that I didn't know before. And I spent a lot of time actually learning the, uh, the scanner gun. And there's quite a bit you can do with it. And it, it's, it basically keeps the whole entire system. Um, of you know product dates how much is in stock how to order how to, all of that is on that gun so it's it's very um, it was very good experience for me to learn those um, especially when I'm going into a management position because you have to be able to keep track of all those numbers and all those um, and all the product that you're selling, as well as you know, check your inventory. You know, gathering information from other job sources, and um, so yeah, I, I acquired quite a bit of experience there. I, I took a couple. Uh, one one leading position actually in, in particular was uh, I had two callouts um, when I was while I was working in produce, and I was the closing um, person for for the night. So I had to make sure that everything in the department was spotless and up to date because in the morning they have to open it and when customers come in they had the, you know you want a really nice fresh display in the produce yeah. department so i had two call outs and they were my help for the night and normally it goes where one person works the dry side and the other person works the wet rack and the wet rack would be like you know the leaf lettuces and you know radishes onions all that that's being sprayed yeah, yeah, yeah. so I didn't have the guy um, to uh, help me with the dry side, so I had to actually go around um, to a couple departments asking if they had anybody to spare for just a little bit of time. That's the, I mean, a little bit was uh, enough to give me, you know, a head start in this yeah, mix. Get you going. We'll it was fairly busy that day too, um, so I asked grocery. And they actually had a person that was an extra for them that they were able to um, send them over for, for four hours, which was perfect for me. That was, mm -hmm. um, And I went over to 
the nutrition department as well, and we, I was able to get um, another person too. So both these individuals didn't actually know anything about produce. Mm -hmm. So I had to um, allocate time to teach them uh, about the the tasks and the, the operations of of the whole department and what's important and and um, I presented tasks for each one of them to work on and so I would um, I would let them go and I'd go and do my tasks and then every 15 minutes I'd come by and I'd be like you know how you guys doing you know or you guys are doing an awesome job you know and then I'd give them a little bit of constructive criticism like you know little pointers like um, you know here's how you can you know do this faster and yeah. more effectively and, yeah. and, and you know issue new tasks if, if their tasks were completed so uh, we actually ended up working really well and we were having a good time everybody was you know that we were stressed out at first but um, as, as we down. we got going they started picking up yeah. a lot of the things and and uh, by the end of the the shift um, we all just kind of stood back at the department and looked and everything looked really nice and you know I can grad I um I definitely thank them for their hard work and and um, yeah we all work together really well and so um, the the department manager opening the next morning um, complimented us on our, mm -hmm. on our work and it was a very su successful day despite the, the two call outs yeah. it could have been a it could have been a horrible day yeah but because it turned out really well yeah I would have been running around doing a lot but but it, it definitely turned around. All right, Kyle. So I have a couple more questions. And then when we sure. go to the interview, um, one one uh, other questions is: uh, Do you have any sales experience? Yes, uh, both um, Subway and Fred Meyer. Actually, um, I won't talk about Subway. Uh, Subway. Um, I was a sandwich artist, so I, I would um, typically just make whatever sandwich anybody told me to make. Yeah. So, I mean, there would be pre-made sandwiches and then there'd be custom sandwiches. So you had to really, um, you know, pay attention to detail on that too because people were very particular with their sandwiches. Um, sure. But but I, I did a lot of upselling. Um, as far as uh, um, Subway goes, um, a lot of upsell on the chips and the cookies and the and the drinks, you know, and... and, and um, Convince, persuading them about a certain sandwich that they they might like based on the sandwiches that they have been getting. I would remember what sandwiches they would have, and I would actually start making their sandwich before they actually walked in. And they appreciated that. Yeah. Um, it was kind of risky at the same time because what if they wanted a different sandwich? But because I knew those customers, they always got the same sandwich, and they weren't the type that would like to switch it up. So I would judge it by that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely upsell a lot and and used a lot of uh, sales tactics to to um, get them to buy additional so you just do it like a sales pitch you know yeah just kind of, just kind of throw it out there you know kind of let yeah. them hear it yeah know? exactly I mean and, the, and it worked too because oh, yeah. they they ended up buying you know quite a bit more than what they were originally mm -hmm. planning to to get and um, Fred Meyer you know we, we have to do the same thing you know working a produce I uh, I have to, um, I like to, to pick out veg, vegetables or fruits that people don't normally buy mm -hmm. um, because they don't know what it is and I'll uh, sample them out. So I'll go out and I'll start talking to customers and, you know, start a little small talk and then I'll, I'll say, hey, do you want to try this um, pluot? And they're like, what's a pluot? You know, oh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll give it out and be like, wow, this is, i I've never tried it before. I'm like, yeah, they're just right over here and they're actually on sale, you know? And, and so, um, part of it is just knowing, um, the right products to upsell mm -hmm. and, and developing a tactic for that product. Some things, some products are very hard to sell. So yeah. they require a different, uh, style of, of presenting, presenting it, customer. so yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you kind of have to adapt to, mm -hmm. to the nice, nice. You know, customer needs as well. You know, you don't want something that's irrelevant to what they're getting to, you know. Yeah. 
they're making a stir fry, you know, you don't want like a bag of chips <laughs> and a stir fry. That's just, you know, why would yeah. you, you know? So it seems you're, you know, you're very knowledgeable and do your homework. So, you know, once you do your homework, you could recommend, you know, the necessities or like you mentioned, products are relevant to what the customer is buying. Yeah. And that's a really good trait, you know? And Thank you. Last question, Kyle. Sure. Um, what are you able to bring to the table for REI? Uh, for REI, I feel that the skills that I've acquired from both Fred Meyer and Subway are applicable to this job because you need a person that's motivating, coaching and directing, and able to have good interpersonal skills with customers, and as well as um, issuing um, tasks in an effective and an enthusiastic way. Yeah. And I definitely match that criteria um, based on my experiences with Fred Meyer um, and dealing with customers and uh, working aside with management and um, and uh, the examples that I gave before uh, when I was leading a, a team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another, another example of me leading a team was um, actually working on a engineering product product uh, engineering product um, that we developed and uh, as a final project and uh, it was a, a very complex prosthetic hand and I led a team of four individuals to um, analyze and basically um, design this product using a 3d printer and oh, um, nice. I believe the program was called SolidWorks, and it Solid was a it was a three D model um, designing program that um, you had to design every single part. So I had to issue tasks out for everyone, mm -hmm. um, so that we could complete it in a in a timely manner. And um, you know, accountability was was brought to each individual person, and um, and you know if there was certain um, struggles with a certain part, we would, I would kind of, uh, you know, coach them through it and, and be like, hey, you know, listen, this, what if we did it this way? Mm -hmm. or what if we, what, what do you think? You know, I'd always ask, you know, what they think on, on uh, re, um, like gathering feedback. On yeah, like yeah. Testing. To, yeah. because, uh, you know, reaching out to all, your teammates and, and brainstorming is, is important, you know, mm -hmm. learning what they have to say and contributing and combining it all into one. Combining everyone's input, you know. Yeah, it's it's yeah. important, you know, and it makes them happy too. They feel like, you know, they're a part of a team and for sure. Um, everyone has a very bright mind, you know, yeah. when you, especially when you in, inspire people to and motivate them to bring it, bring it out onto the table mm -hmm. and, you know, you end up with that mindset, you end up uh, executing goals, you That's know? That's great, yeah. So. All right, Mr. Cloyd. Well, I believe that is it for our interview today. Um, are there any questions you would like to ask me before we conclude this session? Yeah. Um, what would be like a typical day for you uh, working at Aria? Um, so just observing like uh, the store managers and the uh, advisor, like the retail advisors, um, mm. they're really they're really trying you know it's holiday season so you know they're really busy with like restocking organizing and of course you know um, as you mentioned customer service you know customer service is of course very important in uh, any retailer so mm -hmm. um, just you know providing um, positive customer service making sure that you know people want to come back to REI, REI and shop at REI and um, so they it's just you know exemplifying great customer service um, you know, uh, knowing some of the products, you know, that's a plus, but you know, like, you know, it's always an add on. So mm -hmm. as long as you are great, uh, you have great interpersonal skills, you can communicate with customers really well, you know, show that you really love your job, then, um, that's usually a typical work day at REI. Yeah. I, uh, I definitely value, um, REI's codes of 
ethics and, ethics and enthusiasm, enthusiasm and mm-hmm. every time I, I'm a member actually with REI and so I and I shop there regularly nice. so I'm, I'm a customer as well and, yeah. and we every time I go in there it's everyone's mm-hmm. very excited and and passionate about their work and that that's one thing that I, I love when I walk in there you know like I'm passionate about the outdoors these people are passionate about the outdoors they provide great customer service and they love working there and yeah. I've noticed that um, REI is uh, made it to the top 100 fortune magazines oh yeah for definitely reaching up there um uh, since like 1982 i believe 20 years or something I like that so. yeah it's not really that. that's very very impressive you know and and i i really like that rei has um goals for improving on their um energy consumption as well as um you know, finding sources that aren't going to pollute the environment. And mm-hmm. they're very active in, in um, you know, maintaining and, and building and um, taking care of trails out there. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that I, I, I appreciate about the company. All right, and I'm definitely glad to hear your interest, Kyle. You know, we'll definitely give you a call back. Thank you, Ryan. We'll let you know. All right. I appreciate the opportunity, yeah. and I, I hope to see you again. All right, enjoy the rest of your day.